Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Black Shirt Breakdown. We are back again. It is 2023 officially. Um, he is Jay Foreman. I'm Steve Marek. I'm a staff writer at Inside Nebraska, and Jay Foreman is our NFL veteran and former Nebraska Black Shirt. First of all, Jay, it's 2023. How was your New Year's? Pretty good, man. It, uh, you know, you didn't uh, do anything big, but I'm uh, excited that, uh, you know, we still have some Husker news to go over and uh, even more that we have some possibly to today. So it's always a good uh, New Year's and day when you're talking football. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get right into it. Nebraska's 2023 recruiting class grew by two members. Um, the first one, Cameron Lenhart, and the second one, um, Ethan Nation, corner um, from Roswell, Georgia. Both of those guys committed to the Huskers today um, um, at the Under Armour All-American All-Star Game. So, Jay, just I think those are two two names that have have maybe risen to the surface with Husker fans as kind of possibilities in this class. I um, mean, it came true. Both of them committed to Nebraska today. Um, so let's let's get into the first one. Cameron Lenhart, really interesting prospect from IMG Academy down in Bradenton, Florida. He is a six foot three, 245 pound outside linebacker, defensive end, um, kind of in the middle there. Um, right. And we have we have some highlights that we want to show you here for everybody at home. Jay, first of all, when watching Cameron Lenhart, I guess what what uh jumps out to you about um his, his overall game? Well, the first thing that, that jumps off the screen is he has heavy, violent hands, which is great. So that means that you know he can, you know, own his gap or do his assignment, own it, and then shed the block and make some plays. And he's pretty strong, uh, built pretty stout. Now, granted, he's 245 pounds. He's going to get bigger, regardless if he plays defensive end or possibly slides in on third down and plays defensive tackle. But you see the play right there, the the first initial shock, right? And that's a pretty big guard that he's going against right there. Shock, release, extension, throw him, um, and, and make the play. So that's a, you know, that's a, that's a triple home run right there for him and a tackle for loss. So, that's four pl pluses right there. And he's explosive right there. He comes out of his hips, comes out, you know, with fires off his hands. Good pad level. You see that right there. Extens extends the arms, finds where the ball's at, owns his gap, and then he becomes a football player. And, it, and when you look at it in comparison to some of the issues that maybe had plagued Nebraska in years past, and that was it. You might have a guy in your gap, but do you own the gap and then go play football? And obviously being an IMG, which is a little bit higher level than – regular public school or maybe private school high school here in Lincoln or other states they're getting you know around the the clock you know coaching and opportunity there and so you know he's probably coming to Lincoln a little bit more ready not only from a development standpoint but from a mentality standpoint and for Nebraska to be able to get a guy like this in the Under Armour All-Star game now granted I know it's the All-Star game uh, but it bodes well for the uh, new coaching staff uh, because I think he was a previous commit decommitted when uh, Eric Shenander got fired and the new staff most likely wasn't going to come back. But then Matt Rule and company, Terrence Knighton, a.k.a. Pot Roast, must have really hit the pavement hard, like what they saw. So then you saw some crossover, right? And that's what you want. You you, you got to give kudos to the past staff, to the present one as well, to getting the job done. Another good play right there, standing this big guard up here. I mean, geez, the, these kids in high school are a lot bigger than what I played. But look at him right here playing inside like a three technique. Good hands again. Good leverage. You see him, what we used to call burping, burping the offensive lineman. That's where your head snaps back a little bit, throws off violently and gets in on the play. So not only did he play his B gap when you're in a three technique, and for people, when you're in a three technique, you're outside shoulder to the guard. Most likely your run gap is that B gap. But look what he does by coming off the ball and blowing this guy up. He shrinks down that A gap for number three and then also allows number three, their linebacker there, to be a free hitter. So that's also being a great teammate. That's being a great football player, a great high school football player. So these are some of the things uh, that you can see very, you know, very uh, well in the, in the near future, which will be next year, or quite frankly, soon after that, uh, of his playmaking ability in the run game. Uh, he's built really well. Uh, again, uh, right there, it, it, it's the play recognition jumps off the screen here. A little bit of a tight formation, a wide three technique, a really tight five technique that kind of jumped into a four by uh number 25. So what Cam Lennard did, which is I always try to tell the guys that I've coached or trained, look, don't run into darkness. Darkness is where there's another player that got into your gap. And you see the big defensive tackle here, the nose guard gets up field and essentially blows through the A gap and into Cam Lennard's uh, gap, which is the B gap. You see this right here. Look at Cam Lennard again, 
playing with good leverage, uses it, his own leverage, the offensive lineman's own leverage against him, throws him off, and again, makes the tackle at or behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's what really jumped off the tape for him. I think he's a four-star recruit. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is how you are uh, really a legitimate four-star, under, under Armour All-American uh, game participant. And obviously, it's great that he's a Nebraska Cornhusker commit because uh, you can see what he can do in the run game. And then obviously those same types of techniques, effort and play recognition and being a good football player allows him to rush the pass there effectively as well. Jay, obviously we don't know exactly how Tony White, the new defensive coordinator, is going to go about things. But if we look at the tape from Syracuse, we saw that 3-3-5. We saw those um, kind of hybrid outside linebacker defensive ends that have the ability to play on the line of scrimmage and then also off at the second level at the linebacker um, depth. Is that right. something that you maybe could foresee um, from seeing from Cam Lenhart in the future? Yeah, I think obviously those three plays were him playing inside a three technique, but yep. he's athletic enough to play defensive end or stand up outside linebacker in a three, three, five. And, and, and what they do sometimes they go into a three, four look. So what he's done or what he allows a, a defensive coordinator like coach white to do is have tremendous amount of flexibility, both personnel wise and scheme wise. Now mm -hmm. he has to develop and learn, mm -hmm. you know, three or four different positions. But when you're coming from IMG, he's done all this stuff before. And, and this is, he's not, this is not new to him. And so he, he can do all three. He can play on it. You know, you can stand up and rush the passer. Uh, he's athletic enough to drop into coverage. Um, he could play as, you know, hand in the dirt defensive end and, 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 you know, third down nickel. So, he could also play, you know, a defensive end if you're playing just a straight forefront or four-man front, excuse me. He could be an open side or a boundary side defensive end. So the difference between there is like, you know, your outside, uh, you know, your open end would be more your best pass rusher on the right side. And then your boundary would be your left defensive end, a little bit of your run stuffer as you see the techniques there. Then if they really develop a multitude of pass rushers, he has the experience of kicking inside to give you more speed at that three technique and inside pass rush ability. And you saw a little bit of him running a, uh, you know, a T, a TT stunt, which is between the nose guard and the tackle stunt. So you're seeing the, the experience that he had at IMG uh, that hopefully will lead to success here at Nebraska. A really good recruiting win for Matt Rule and company. Um, Lenhart was also, Penn State was in on, on Lenhart as, as well as Rutgers and Maryland. So three, three Big Ten teams that right. Nebraska kind of came in won back the commitment from Cameron Lenhart, who was once committed to the Huskers, like you mentioned earlier, and then got that commitment. So really good right. stuff from, from Rule and company there. Let's head over to Ethan Nation now, a corner from Georgia. Um, look, this is, I think, a really interesting prospect because uh, what I kind of liked from Ethan Nation is his speed, his shiftiness, the way he moves um, it is really good, in my opinion. Um, kind of interesting how... Ethan Nation came on Nebraska's radar. J.C. Horn, a former South Carolina um, defensive back, was trained in current Carolina Panthers right. defensive back, trained with Ethan Nation, Ethan Nation in the offseason, and that's how kind of Matt Rule found out about Ethan Nation as, as a recruit when he was um, the head coach at, with the Carolina Panthers. So right. kind of interesting how the two parties came together, but they are together, and they're, um, um, Ethan Nation is a member of the 2023 class now. So let's head over to the film. Um, Jay, what, what did you see from Ethan Nation here? Well, you see a big, long corner. Um, you know, you talked about his athletic ability. I think you could obviously play receiver if you want, but he's a big, long corner. You can see his long arms, even though the tape isn't really good. Yeah. He's a pretty good back pedal there, play recognition. I like any corner that high points the ball. Then you see the return ability. But what you really, what I look for in a corner is, is being fluid in your back pedal and fluid with your hips, opening and closing your hips and being able to break on the ball without losing balance or bad footwork and if you see this right here kind of in a what we used to call a scoot technique where you're just kind of scooting off and he's jamming that receiver into the safety then he sees another uh receiver come into his own area he almost baits the quarterback think it's open now mm -hmm. he has the recover recover ability to not only break up the pass but intercept the pass high point it now he's going back the other way and trying to turn it into six points and so you like the playmaking ability. You like this, the football smarts. You like the athletic ability. And you also like the mindset of him, uh, you know, to be very, very competitive in a competitive league that he played in high school. And um, this one, I just wanted to throw in, I know he's going to start his career at corner, but I wanted to throw in the receiver screen he had on one of his highlights because I think this really kind of tells you what kind of athlete Ethan Nation is. 
Um, just it, it really impressive stuff. How he how he got through almost half this defense here. Right, you see right here. Good, he's he's a hand catcher. So you saw that you know just last play. You know as a defensive back. Now you see the you see him as a receiver uh, with the ability to make people miss, run the run the smoke screen and read the block. So now you know he's an all around football player. But then also he has the speed to take it to the house again. Playing against high level competition, even though it's in high school, is going to bring out the best in you. And look, listen, some of the best defensive backs to ever play, uh, both in college and the pros, played played wide receiver at time in high school. Reason why it does correlate because they know the routes, they know the route tree, they know the formations, and it allows them to be more aggressive. And most likely, even though I'm a defensive player, I hate to say it, most guys that play receiver have better hands than the guys that play defense. So that's where you see the guys that are high point, high point. Uh, ball interceptor, high point defensive back guys that are would challenge receivers because they're going up playing defensive back as a receiver. So this is just an example. And you like a guy again, I say, you know, look at his hips. You're making three or four guys miss. If three or four guys miss, anytime you get up the sideline, you got to have the speed to take it to the house. Uh, and, and that's what he did right there very well. Yeah. And this, uh, le this last final play, again, like you said, you always mention with the DVs. Uh, you love it when they high point the ball. This is exactly what he did against a bigger receiver. Yeah, bigger receiver right here. A little bit of a, a zone kind of type of concept right there because he didn't really run in with the motion. But I, what I really like here is not only his ability to high point the ball, but to play deep to short. He didn't take the cheese. You see, this is a FUD route, right? Uh, a, a, a short flat, mid flat, and a deep seven cut. He has athletic ability to actually fake on the mid, mid uh, flood route right there get back enough underneath the seven route or a corner route, as, as uh, layman terms like to call it, high point it, again, like a former receiver or a current receiver defensive back and make a huge interception against a big receiver uh, in, a, in a crucial part of the game. So it's the play recognition. You see the fluid fluidity of the hips right there. Obviously, you can see a little bit better. I think he has the pink socks on, but look at the hips right here to open up, gain depth, right? And still concentrate and, and have ball skills and have, High point ball skills is everything that you need uh, to be a successful, you know, defensive back, obviously at the high school level, but, you know, to have the potential to be good at the Big Ten level. And so that's what you need. You're going to be playing against great competition week in and week in, week in and week out, day in and day out, especially in practice and then obviously in the game. So there's going to be a lot of 50 50 balls that you need all your defensive backs to, to make a play on. Him in particular is shown the ability to do that along with the fluidity of his hips, I think is really going to you know pay off well. He can run, as you can see. He's quick. He has quickness. He's a tough kid uh, that's willing to stick his nose in there, you know, obviously as a, as a defensive back. But I really, really like his potential as far as being a corner, uh, both in man and a little bit of a matchup zone or a straight zone as he played there, just because he's shown the ability to recognize uh, passing routes. And I think his, his experience as a receiver will yeah. help him maybe make that transition a little bit faster, you know, as far as playing big, big 10 cornerback position. Uh, so now he just, not, you know, he needs to develop and come in and, and his, earn his playing time like everybody else. Yeah. And he will need to develop five foot 11, but 165 pounds. Um, look, you know, corners come in all shapes and sizes. So, you know, three-star athlete and Nebraska snagged him away from Auburn, Ohio state and Houston were kind of the right. other three uh, schools that were, that were after eat the nation credit to Evan Cooper, the DB's coach who again, um, kind of found out about him from JC Horn, his former player um, over right. at, uh, with the Carolina Panthers. Um, so yeah, three-star athlete. And then Cameron Lenhart, four-star athlete. Um, that'll, that'll probably likely play an outside linebacker defensive end type in, in Tony White's three, three, five defense. So two more additions to Nebraska's 2023 class, um, for Jay Foreman. I am Steve Mark, and that was the Blackshirt Breakdown. We'll see you guys later.